I'm The Voice, and this is a Divi community-produced video from the Foundation. Today is episode 11, and we've got Rob, and we've got Niggs. How's it going, guys? It's going great as usual. <laughs> it's going all good. It's always going good. I'm as all, usual, yeah. We good. always do that. It's kind of the <laughs> common, the common stuff. I'm going to say it sucks one day. <laughs> it's, it's right now. <laughs> Maybe next yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we got lots of news going on. I think we, we can uh, feel a little bit um, more comfortable about some stabilized BTC. Can't we? You know, I think so. That's going on. That's right. Last episode, we were um, right into the, you know, uh, carry <laughs> trade that, you know, Japan crashed that kind of, <laughs> yeah. you know, had uh, waves into all the markets and also impacted Bitcoin. And so, yeah, now we are at what, 53K, I believe, something like that. No, I think 53. it's, but unless it dropped in the last like yeah, hour it did drop. or so. Yeah, 59, dude. 59. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah but, where I mean, are you? you? So much about <laughs> being up the crap out of me. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know why I say 53. <laughs> yeah, because it was 35K? Like, yeah. <laughs> Is it 35? <laughs> <You're just guessing. laughs> and I put that there, like myself. Like I checked myself. I don't know why I, I said that. I know. That. You, <laughs> I wanted to That's see okay. if everyone was awake. I will buy all yeah. of your Bitcoin. How about that? <laughs> <laughs> I'll buy it and happily sell it some more. Yeah. There we go. Oosh, boy. I mean, not just Bitcoin. It looks like markets came back. Everything came back. Um, Ethereum uh, is still kind of wobbly, but... <laughs> That's right. Yeah. However, uh, we, we can still see that uh, the Mongok situation is not over um, the FTX distribution is not over. And now we have yeah. even more news with 10,000 BTC that are moved from the U.S. Treasury, if I understand correctly. Yeah. And they're moving yeah, that Coinbase. to Coinbase. They've moved that to yeah. 10,000 BTC. Um, I think um, maybe we want to talk about yeah, the CPI. Um, so that's another thing that didn't look that great so the deep, the cpi was published and then the inflation came out at 3.2 uh, percent for the year and mm -hmm. unfortunately a lot of people were waiting for it to be below three percent and it would have justified rate cuts and those rate cuts usually mean a bump for you know cryptocurrencies i mean if you read up we, there's still a lot of inflows like i, I think it's 150 million a week of inflows uh, that we've been seeing so far. And I think what we're seeing though, is like we're pr the price of Bitcoin is pretty resilient to all the damage being that seems to be happening. I'm not a big conspiracy guy, but I gotta tell you, it really feels like these, it feels like these are in order, just <laughs> in order to just make, you know, any sort of breakout not happen. I mean, just, it's just, it's not happening all at once. This, uh, this Silk Road thing, that could have happened, what, in the last 10 years, any time. But now, like, now it's happening now, and they've only done 10,000, I think, of the 30,000 coins they have of Bitcoin they have, that they have. They had 70, right? So, Isn't that what they had yeah. originally? So, I mean, like, it just, it, I mean, again, I'm not a big conspiracy guy, but this is, like, I it, I guess I'm getting weary is what it, it just feels like. They, like, oh, we'll, we'll find somewhere else to keep, you know, the price down. Um but anyway, I guess we'll see. Do you think do you think it's related to that or it's the fact that we have essentially, as I tried to stress before, when you have a whale that's a, maybe not a beneficial whale, but a whale that's related to, well, that's focused solely on self. If you look at the U.S. government, it has this supply. It just happens to be that it's a gazillion Bitcoin. And if they're going to make a decision... It's at, I think, in Neegs, you suggested or you, you had mentioned that it was just because the market was at a certain height. And it feels weird because it's so much downward pressure. If it was distributed, like we were talking about Mount Gox, maybe three episodes or three updates ago, Mount Gox, if all of those recipients who had their funds locked in this court dealing um when they start receiving their bitcoin or their usd or whatever their payments are getting but if they're receiving their bitcoin it's hundreds or thousands of people that have their amounts of bitcoin and some of those will hold some of those will sell some of those will you know trade they'll do whatever they're doing with it it's distributed it's the the pressure is different than if it was just japan like they did 
um, uh, in their own markets just in the last call, when they do something, if it's all in one weight, one basket, one bucket poured out all at once, it kind of floods everything. So, um, yeah. So, yeah, I'm, I'm not suggesting I'm, I'm right that there's a conspiracy. It just, it just feels like it. I mean, we, when we got into this, when we started doing these updates, we talked, it was right before the halving and we were all very cautious about some amazing thing happening right, right at, near the halving. We were like, you know, there, there's been examples of it being six months. Uh, it's getting close to six months. <laughs> you know, yeah. so, here is yeah. the thing I said initially when we were talking about that, like this is, I thought the news was making the cycle, but in fact, I feel like it's more like the, the news rides on the cycle. Uh, the cycle is, is not changing. And if you look at previous cycles, August is always a very bad month. Like it has always yeah. been like that. And yeah. I mean, we can see that those things are here. And of course, we, we talked about the bad news, but in fact, we we'll also talk about a bunch of good news. Um, yeah. It, in a further segment. And I think that what you highlight or uh, what happens, like it, it could be right before uh, the big rally and September being constantly green in the history of, you know, Bitcoin and That's the true. market. That's true. Um, it, it is interesting. I, yeah. I don't like you talking about a conspiracy. And I understand it because definitely yeah. it looks I'm like definitely not are. saying there is one. I'm, I'm just saying that's how it feels. That's true, but they could also yeah. be taking the opportunity to, yeah. you know, close those topics when Bitcoin is actually not at the bottom, which probably make all those things a lot easier to settle. So I, I don't know. It's difficult to yeah. say, but but right now, I don't think we are away from the quote unquote predictions that that no, we had in mind um, yeah. for the time. No, we're maybe. not away from that yet. Uh, and then the other thing is uh, you can see the resilience, right? Like it, it keeps coming back totally. up to the 60s. Right? Each time there's an announcement of one of these things, it keeps popping right back up. Right. So, I mean, that, uh, we can just look at that stability, especially this last week. It was, <laughs> it was like a stable coin. Uh, so, <laughs> yeah. And I, um, honestly, I've not looked at the markets, how they yeah. recovered from the carry trade, but definitely crypto or Bitcoin, at least, uh, recovered yeah. pretty quickly. Yeah, it did. Um, but so we can move on into better news. Uh, this first one is is about the Harris campaign kind of paying attention to crypto. Uh, so I'm not saying it's that there's good news that's going to come out of it. I think it's good news that they're they're paying Talking attention. About it. Yeah. Like it's not like it's not this thing we're going to ignore and just leave hanging like it's been for however long. Um, there's more to it than that, but there's a whole campaign now called Crypto for Harris. Um, so again, the good news is that, you know, there, and, and in fact, when I was at the Bitcoin conference, there was even talks of her even showing up there. They couldn't make that happen for one reason or another. I, I don't know more than that. I heard, I heard multiple stories about why, uh, she didn't show up or didn't send a representative. Um, but the, now there's this crypto for Harris things. There's a town hall meeting happening, uh, or happened. Well, it actually. happened. Yeah. Yeah. It yeah. happened. And so the, and then like, then there's the question of like, what will they do? Well, the fact of the matter is they're no longer doing nothing. And, you know, we, we may get good or bad out of that uh, going forward, but right now, at least like maybe there's clarity. Um, and maybe that when we talk about inflation, we talk about GDP, their, their magic number that they use to rate the health of everything. They want to start including crypto in that GDP number. And then and you can't do that unless companies are, are thriving in America, crypto companies are thriving in America. I think even Dems understand that. Um, so all right. that is it, that all that is positive. Yeah, I think it's a it's a good thing. I think it goes in the continuity of what we were talking about last time, where yeah. we're glad to see that crypto is now a topic that a candidate to the U.S. Uh, candidacy can't miss like they have yeah. to they have to take that into account and i would say that i wasn't i wasn't there but looking at how things seems to be organized and how the message is spread it looks like a last minute thing on the yeah, harris campaign yeah. 
uh, more an adaptation to the moves from uh, Kennedy and Trump. But mm -hmm. again, it's still uh, it's still a great thing. It's really, I think, we can really be glad that crypto kind of reached some major step that now it will be hard to take it down from, right? Yeah, so, when you've got agree, like yeah. a major uh, Senate leader, Chuck Schumer, he's from my ex-state, New York. Uh, I'm very familiar <laughs> with this guy. Uh, but when you, when you have someone like him saying crypto is never going away, we clearly passed the, the they laughed at you stage. We passed most of the uh, they fight you stage. Now we're just settling into how we get accepted. Uh, and I guess that's where the big battles are. Um, that's right. Because, right, what ha what normally happens when there, there are incumbent things in an in uh, entities in, in an industry, the first thing you're going to do is get on board with the regulators and make it work for them. Um, and so that's the fighting <laughs> we're probably going to have to do now. Uh, and, yeah, you know, first and they wanted to ban it. Now they have yeah. accepted that they won't be able to ban it. So now they want to negotiate the terms. I mean, yeah. you can see yeah. that um, declaration from uh, that sen senator, uh, Chuck Schumer. Um, yeah. He actually say things like, it's important to take control over that and not be on the sideline. I mean, yeah. I don't, I'm not happy to hear things like that. But again, it, yeah. is, um, it is some sort of validation by the system that crypto is needing for it is. for its you know, it is. adoption journey. So I think I mean I that think whole have... crypto for Harris thing is is from a a, a uh, PayPal dude, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the blockchain expert at PayPal, which right. is, you know the PayPal's version of crypto sucks, <laughs> and that just reads to me like okay, we're gonna put in regulations that benefit us. And it's so um, funny because last time you said like maybe the Democrats will come in and maybe their angle would be CBDC are great, and now they have yeah. the PayPal guy. That's yep. beautiful. Yeah, the PayPal guy. <laughs> uh, yeah. So, so I, I haven't watched it yet either. Now I'm, now I'm more interested to watch it because it's, I see one, two, three, four crypto for Harris organizers starting out. And then, uh, and then I do, and then I see some other people. I, I have no idea who they are. Um, like here's professor Tony Evans, like, <laughs> who are you? Um, but later, and then there's more people I've never heard of before. Um, but then later, uh, Mark Cuban does come on and, and then, um, Chuck Schumer does come on, and then there's some. There are actually some senators that do come on. I, I don't see Loomis showing up, um, and then some people who I've never heard of again. Uh, this is all a, a Zoom. Then another congressman I've never heard of. But but what's funny yeah, is all later, I see is Zoom screenshots. So I don't see actual yeah. videos. No, there's there's a video here. I'll, I'll send oh. it to you. But um, but then funny the 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 face I never expected to see. Here is uh is a uh, Scaramucci. Um, <laughs> I don't know why he's here. I'm pretty sure he's not a not a uh, a Congress person. Um, <laughs> so, but he he makes a show a showing in it. Um, but anyway, yeah, maybe I'll watch this because uh, it's the first time I'm actually seeing. Maybe it just came up today. Um, but I actually, it's only been up for one day. That's why. Um. So we can maybe watch this and report it on this more next time. But there are a bunch of people in here, just a lot of people, mostly people that I, you've never heard of. Yeah, again, um, I think it does look like a, a late organization, right? The communication yeah. is not clean. The message is not spread yeah. properly. Like you, you can see that it kind of lacks the, the proper strength in the messaging that you usually have. Uh, for such big parties, right? And well, you gotta admit, like nothing. Harris has supplied zero information about what any of her plans are, except for capping price gouging, which is stupid. Um, yeah. So it's not like no, also it, uh, no you know, tips. Like she, they, I think she took the Trump uh, thing. No, no uh, tax on. Oh, tips. no tax on tips. Yeah, no yeah, tax yeah. On tips. Let's not get. I think if we, I, if we stay yeah. positive, at least they're talking about it. If we look at history. They don't want us to look at that because historically speaking, I think we can go down the line that everybody who's really formally supporting her on that Democratic Party side has been pretty aggressive or negative or to the point of attacking crypto. Yeah. Um, so they're flipping the narrative. If anything, 
Do I think it's a positive that they have this meeting? Absolutely. We don't know yet, right? Especially if they're non-coiners listening. They didn't say I don't know. they would be very positive. They said that they will integrate it. Right? Yeah, that, well, that I'll was, watch that was kind of the link. note I was going to conclude <laughs> yeah. that. Um, yeah. Part on I'll watch is this that YouTube link. We'll see. We it. can all be happy and regret that they will not work <laughs> yeah, to exactly. on bipartisan uh, regulations. Yeah, so honestly, there's money to be had there. There's they're, they're going to make something work. We may not, we'll probably not like it, but something will work out. Um, yeah, but uh, it, it'll whatever will work out will end up money being flowing into the government from from the crypto industry. Right, that'll be in true. America. Right. That's, and for us, it's <laughs> that know? paradox where yeah. we want this <laughs> to move forward, and it is the way it moves forward, but it is also the way it loses some of its freedom. So yeah. that's that's the way it is. All right. So speaking of uh, one candidate, let's speaking talk about another Chuck. one. That's well, right. No, we did Chuck, I think. But, yeah, uh, I think we did I Chuck. I mean, it turns out Trump owns crypto. That's what I'm being told. Yeah, yeah. That's right. Yeah, he, he also sold, has yeah. NFTs, right? He sold more <laughs> yeah, than 7 million of his <laughs> NFTs. <laughs> And, yeah. uh, and it's reported that it still holds up to 5 million in crypto. So I think that I don't think we have more news about that side on crypto. Yeah. And I think it was just interesting to see the contrast where you see the Democrats that are kind of running to organize quickly something to show that they actually consider crypto. While on the other side, Trump has already sold 7 million in NFTs. Has, mm. I mean, obviously it's not him. Obviously, yeah. it's part of his team. But again, it's yeah. interesting to see that, um, yeah, basically, they were more prepared to to talk to crypto people, it looks like. Right. So, And we don't talk much about that, but Kennedy too, right? Yeah, you can see that yeah, he was true. also much more forward than... And well, he's the Trump only might have followed, who I think actually. actually understands this stuff <laughs> to some degree. <laughs> I don't even know if it's the case, to be honest, but maybe. Oh, really? <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I don't think it's really their role. Their role is more to surround themselves with people who do because uh, to understand all that, it actually takes a lot of time and, you know, personal investment to understand all, how all those things work. But I mean, well, we're the same. I don't, I don't mean how transactions work. I just mean like here is a, here is a, a, a great form of money. Um, sure. Not, 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 I don't mean that he understands like, you know, signing blocks or whatever. Right, you know? right. And I'm sure they understand <laughs> briefly that. I think all of them. However, I'm yeah. sure they also have people around them who are telling them, no, don't do that. It's evil. We have some control. <laughs> you won't give that yeah. away. And and yeah. Yeah, if they, if in, in the end they choose the right advisor that are telling them to go that direction, I think it's a, it's a very good point. And it looks like Kennedy started... Then Trump went pretty quickly behind, and now the Democrats yeah. are finally waking up. Yeah, so, so that's, that's good. I mean, that's good for Divi in that the, you know, the clarity makes it easier to uh, to uh, exist. And you, you know, every, everybody in our project kind of knows that there's like these weird, like there's. I don't know if everybody knows this, but in order to have a crypto, really, is like you. There's always these foreign entities, and we've got you know. Businesses that were based around crypto, uh, around Divi had to be made in like Costa Rica or whatever. I mean, this is all because of this, you know, tangled, messy, awful environment uh, in America that uh, that exists for crypto. And cl clarity would make that better. Be nice if you could just start a business in crypto in America and go. In fact, one thing I thought of before is like every industry has has this escape hatch clause so like in investing you see all these these uh crypto and and and, and wall street influencers they're all like you know they they can say this is not financial advice uh but buy this thing <laughs> or or in alternative medicine there's like these it, there's a statement that says like these um these statements have not been evaluated by the fda why can't we in crypto just why can't the rule simply be uh like every crypto project says uh you know the uh the fed has not acknowledged this as a form of money and then just let us do what we want <laughs> exactly like in, like in all Keep right. we don't That's want right. them <laughs> <laughs> you know and i and i yes. think it would have to go progressively the first it's already acknowledgement i think that's great and i think we also had this conversation about um privacy coins i think it's the same first we need to get to that first version basically yeah uh where we have our 
autonomy with um, our financial transactions. And then we can move a step forward from there. Uh, yeah. But I, I think, yeah, it's really, it's really great news. Um, yeah. I think we can also talk about the next, yep, yeah, move to the next one, which is another yeah. good news. And basically, uh, Bitcoin ETF and Ethereum ETF are getting the success that was expected. And now big names are having that in their portfolio, like Goldman Sachs yeah. and yeah. other big names. So that's, again, I'm another... Just waiting for JP Morgan. <laughs> no, I think... for that day. No, no, I think there is something <laughs> with JP Morgan. I didn't put it here, but I think they bought somebody who actually had some EGF or something like that. I'll get it for the next uh, for the next time. Okay, Go because that, Goldman uh, Sachs has... That's huge. <laughs> it's reported that they, they have... Um, seven of the 11 bitcoin etfs right now so they have positions in each of them so that's a that's a pretty goodly amount of yeah definitely money they're talking about yeah how much was it again neeks it was like it was over 400 million i think yeah 468 for goldman sachs i believe 468 yeah, 408, yeah. 418, that's a lot 18 yeah. it's probably yeah. not a lot compared to everything else they do right it's it's a, just a lot in bitcoin that's right yeah <laughs> uh yeah so and that's and then um and then there's just a lot of positive sen sentiment you know in terms of uh like going forward with crypto i think um i'm seeing it left and right kind of uh in articles uh, you know the noise they make you know good news doesn't make a lot of noise right so like you know the ten thousand bitcoin showing up uh from silk road you know at coinbase that makes more noise than than a lot of these pro a lot of projects and, and investment places saying, Hey, we're, uh, we're doing, you know, we're doing this, we're doing that. Like it, that doesn't really make a lot of noise, unfortunately, but yeah, there, there's quite a bit. That's right. And there, well, it's, it's there were some kind sells, of, uh, you sorry, go ahead. I was just saying bad news sells. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And there were, there were some kind of difficult time, um, a month ago where investment were kind of going down and, uh, yeah. There were there was some worry about a lot of token that would be um, liberated. They were locked and would come to the market and all that. But it, definitely, it seems that those things actually went pretty pretty good based on you know the risk that we had. And and it seems that now money is coming back and interest is coming back, which is uh, which is great and going very well with our uh, September recovery prediction. <laughs> yeah um <laughs> that would be awesome as, oh and i guess we kind of left it out with uh with big names but like the sec approved the leveraged long microstrategy etf that's that's different than the normal etfs those are the things that are, are more volatile um but can you know if you do them right you can you can make more money because they're leveraged um yeah. so that's another positive thing um, this next thing about the CTFC wanting to be the the regulator is uh, for crypto is cracking me up because Chuck Schumer in that piece before and others are the ones who are saying let's put it in the hands of CT let's put crypto in the hands of CT CTFC not the SEC um, but the funny part was you know they you know they want to regulate it and now because of Chevron uh, we talked about before there's a lot of people saying you don't have the standing to regulate this, you, you know, that's nice. <laughs> you know, that's nice. It, it's yeah. really funny. <laughs> that, that's so remember, I think our position, the now. <laughs> our position with the ACB 121, yeah. where uh, they tried to repeat it and then Biden vetoed it. I think the whole point was actually to give the regulation to the CFTC. And we were yeah. kind of happy about it because, you know, difficult not to be happy for crypto to move away from the SEC's hands, but uh, it still wouldn't be great. As you can see, CFTC is still trying to do the same kind of thing. So yeah. Yeah. And so they're trying to ban prediction markets, right? Which yeah. we, we see a lot in crypto now. And, and, uh, and I, honestly, I just think that's silly. It's just another, they're saying, oh, it can influence elections, but so can everything else. I mean, it's just where they spend their money. So I don't understand any of the real thinking there. I don't think a lot of thinking is happening. Can, but, can you um, actually go to a place like, I've never done this, so I'm, that's yeah. why I'm asking, maybe you guys haven't either, but can you actually go and, and 
place a position that so-and-so is going to be elected as president? Yes. I mean, is that legal to do in, let's say, Vegas or New Jersey or wherever the heck they have it on these? Yes, you can Atlantic totally City? do that. And they look at that. Uh, and some people look at that as a predictor of, uh, Interesting. of uh, who, who will win. And you oh, absolutely it is. can do that. It is actually uh, considered, or at least by some people, as a more solid information than polls because people put money behind it, right? Mm -hmm. So it, it is like... Interesting. You might answer yeah. anything to a poll, but then when you bet on it, you'll not lie, right? I, yeah, I right. want to know what the uh, polls were, excuse me, or what the uh, results were of the prediction markets for the last election. Um, I just want to know what, what that was. I, I, I don't follow those kinds of things because yeah. I don't gamble. Um, so I, I find it curious to learn about it though, but I'm going to look that up. I want to And see. I don't yeah. know the rest of the regulations about it because it seems they're not banning that on the website. So maybe there is a loophole where it's not considered gambling. I don't know, but it looks like they're not interested into those only the crypto version. Of course. <laughs> oh interesting they can't track the money <laughs> oh so so ah so it's only the crypto version there's no problem yeah, with right. the fiat version i mean there might be problems right well, it's maybe not really fiat because you got to convert yeah. your cash to tokens when you go to these casinos and things and anyway, it's true. Sure, I mean, so. and they can track the money with crypto so it's it's, it's a little yeah. retarded uh it really right, is and, like, and maybe like, they yeah. are actually going at the uh, those betting sites for uh, crypto predictions maybe. and maybe it's just it's not crypto we're not doing it so maybe we're not informed you know maybe maybe yeah I don't know All right. but, uh, the prediction markets is outside of my sphere of knowledge so yeah that's not a thing I'll, I'm usually I'll admit interested in. that I'm weak there but <laughs> it's just interesting that they're looking at the CFTC we were positive on the CFTC or at least not negative on the CFTC and we can all lean upon the fact that once you give any organization some controls, they are going to do things you don't like because they want what? More controls. Yeah. <laughs> That's just what happens. That's right. Yeah. So then we can right. move to the next segment. All right, guys. So do you guys want to talk about some geeky stuff now? We'll have some fun. I, what do you think? I do, just because it kind of affects the entire industry, this, this tech. Um, so, so, yeah. We should, we should definitely so. talk about this. Well, let's let, let's let Neeks talk about it since he's like the um, the nerd about side chains and stuff like that. So, <laughs> oh, am I? Yeah, yeah, yes, I think so. so. I think so. I think you're the nerdiest <laughs> out of them all. It didn't used to be that way, but you are definitely becoming that way. We like to pretend <laughs> like you're not you're not knowledgeable about these things, but come on, you you are the brainchild of some of the most cool stuff we've got. It's well, not that you created it, but the uh, the I have to cut that part out. It's too <laughs> it's too much. <laughs> <laughs> you are a seed. How about that? The seed of yes. some crazy stuff that's really cool. Not that you would do this, of course, but anyway. Yeah, so, you want yeah. to talk about zero knowledge proof? No, That's you... right. We wanted to talk about that. So it's not um, it's not only for sidechains, but it would be used within um, the technology that our partner uh, uses. And so mm -hmm. basically, we wanted to go through uh, zero knowledge proof, how they came to be, what's the concept behind it, and then what are the uses in the industry, and then how how we will use it ourselves, basically. Um, I mean, we should talk about it more than that because at, anybody who's interested at all in blockchain will see that uh, zero knowledge proofs are are kind of like one of the hot things right now on, on a ton of different projects, especially interoperability projects. So mm -hmm. we'll just go over it. And now when you see zero knowledge proof or ZK, whatever, um, you'll have some familiarity. That's it. That's right. And so basically, initially on the concept, the uh, zero knowledge proof is something that should enable you to prove something without having the detail of basically any transaction or anything, but you can still prove the validity. And this concept is actually very old because in some situations you need to keep sec secrecy, but you still need to validate um, the validity of the claim, right? Sure. And so basically it is... Um, a whole concept and it has been a uh, decline into um, I would say computer um, models and then it has been reused and what we can see is that the first uh, mentioned of that is 2012 
with the no. uh, snow. Uh, well, yeah. for blockchain right. related, but but the technology has been around since yeah, the yeah, for 80s. blockchain related. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> I was I was directly moving to blockchain related. Yeah. Maybe you Sorry. want to add more things on the history. Oh, just that it was you know decades ago. This thing was uh and you know this idea was invented, um and kind of brought forth and only recently is it really being applied into this industry um as you said so uh that was that was it just wanted to indicate how 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 old this really is yeah yeah that's a good point the first implementation that we see have actually been um towards um anonymity or privacy because this is one of the feature of that technology and the kind of views that we see now are more towards the interoperability um, and then we'll, we'll see all that. And so, again, yeah, I was saying in 2012, the first implementation. Um, so first of all, there was uh, this technology, the ZK Snarks, that have been uh, released, like a paper on that. And then pretty quickly it was integrated into Zcash, if I remember correctly. Mm-hmm. And um, and yeah, so it was essentially to, uh, I think, uh, have categories for transaction and then make sure that uh, the information wasn't shared. Um, And then there was some improvement of that technology. Um, And I think, yeah, we can, um, I don't know if we want to talk about directly the industry implementation, but basically um, there are several implementation. I think the most, um, the most, um, I would say, uh, popular are ZK Snark and ZK Starks. ZK Starks Mm -hmm. came in, 2018 and is actually um, more transparent. Like there are less information that are uh, transferred. It is actually uh, somewhat of an improvement of the ZK Snark. The ZK Snark actually require uh, some trusted setup. So it is it is mostly trustless, but it has some trust minimized components. So it, it is not fully trustless. Um, sure. However, the ZK Starks are, are completely trustless. And so... Yeah, and you also have bulletproof, which is another kind of uh, zero knowledge proof. There are actually others, but those are basically the most uh, the most popular. And again, zk Starks was just uh, released in 2018, so this is really fresh technology. It just just happened. It's fresh, but it, I mean, it's in. We, we've now seen it deployed in different blockchains. So, for example, Litecoin has Mimblewimble, which deploys it. Monero changed their uh, or I should, I should say upgraded their privacy uh and anonymity using uh zk uh also so mm-hmm. it's it's in stuff that we know about uh already um uh, there's other starknet is of course another really big one um that is w- uh, well used what i was actually surprised about was where it wasn't used um so every so lots of there's lots of interoperability projects. Cosmos is one of them. It doesn't use any zk. Layer zero is a huge project. Doesn't use zk. Um, so I was I was very surprised to see that it wasn't implemented in these uh, pretty well known projects. That's right. It's so all about Ghost sharing. Was, you know, yeah, go ahead. Say, no, go mm-hmm. go ahead. Uh, I'll, I will come back after. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, so I was going to say, yeah, uh, Cosmos uh, does use their own uh, model. And so basically they rely on their hub and then their SDK <laughs> for the communication between their side chains and their main chain. So it is it is uh, their own model. And I think layer zero, um, I don't know exactly their whole system, but they are a lot less uh, concerned, it seems, by centralization system. They rely on oracles. They rely on basically smart contract for interoperability. And it's true that basically the the whole ZK rollup is relying on those uh, ZK snark on smart contract, right? One contract on each side. And then basically it's moving uh, communication with those ZK snarks. And, but apparently it's not the direction that layer zero took. No, I, I think a layer zero and a lot of other ones that were really, really they focused on was decentralizing the Oracle. That, that doesn't mean that the endpoints that hook into different blockchains are are, are decentralized. They're not. They're smart contracts. So uh, it's an improvement uh, w- for the interoperability uh, kind of sector there, uh, without a doubt. I mean, it's, they're probably as best in class as we have at the moment. Um, so in terms of w- one thing I think we glossed over a little too fast was like, what is it? 
I think you, yeah. I mean, you talked about it, but really the neat part here is if I could just slow it down a little bit, the neat part is I, I can tell, you know, you can prove that a transaction happened without any information about the transaction itself. That's, that's the neat thing about the zero knowledge. That's what the zero knowledge kind of re refers to. So mm -hmm. like, you can prove that I paid you or whatever without having to tell or paid somebody else without having to tell them, tell a th third party or whoever I'm trying to prove this to how much it was, who I paid or any of those things. That's why, it's, that's why it's such a neat thing. I, I, you know, it's to me. so, it's, it's so mind bogglingly just cool about it. it. It goes even beyond that. You can even break it down more simple in a simple game of let's say where I'm guessing an age or I'm guessing a number that you're thinking, um, you have a number in your head. I input the number I'm, I'm guessing and without ever revealing the number I'm guessing, or even the number that you've revealed, right, that you have in your head, the way the protocol works, it can say that I have either met the expectation of hitting the number or above the number or below the number. It's, it's really, it's really crazy. So it, 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 in some ways it seems almost magical that you can have a moment where two people or more people can come up with an idea for something and then somebody else say that they can make offer for that something and produce that something and they can prove it without even revealing any of the secret data or secret information they have to make whatever what it would be yeah. it would still be provable that's a that's a huge yeah. concept to even undertake it is. and that's it's why blockchains like um that are using rollups do it because they're trying to either compress data or reduce data um uh, uh you know for scalability and all sorts of things um or increase privacy and they can take all that information and say without what all this information is which reveals everything and is a lot to to store and you can condense it down to this one proof that all of this matches this proof no pun intended and you can store that on chain and that's very different it's crazy how this works um, that's right and, and it to be a little bit ahead. technical but remain on the surface really because i don't think um is necessary to go too deep but basically yeah. in the blockchain environment um, those proofs are used to basically transmit the ch the st chain state so the really the situation Correct. of the blockchain whenever that transaction happened and so that's why it is used mainly now for interoperability because it enables to kind of have this connection between the two chains but again the current implementation of that rely on two smart contracts on each side so unfortunately it is not um as achieved as we would like right it is still relying on multi-sig uh, technologies and so that's where really the, I think the DV sidechain will completely change the game because with the, the technology from our partner, it enables to connect directly the, the two blockchain and then yeah. it will use those zero knowledge proof, right? Those stage, um, change state uh, communication and it will really rely on that and it will be 100% decentralized, 100% trustless and will not have to rely on those multi-sig smart contract anymore. And, and when you say chain state, just to break it down for everyone, that is the state of the blockchain at that moment, at that block in time. But what does that mean? That means the entire blockchain from the time of Satoshi, if we're using Bitcoin, to that point in time where you take that sample of data or whatever it is you're doing that. If you can imagine how much information that is, that's massive or in a blockchain like Ethereum, and you can condense it down to a proof from yeah. that one submission or that one finalized immutable block. And that's massive amounts of data provable in one little piece of information. It's, it's pretty impressive what that becomes. That's right. It is actually a major uh, compression mechanism yes. by which huge. you have a huge database, which is summarized in a very small package of information. And that's what enables you to verify 
that it all it's always in synchronization with the other chain and that's basically yeah the whole um technical te technology behind um the interoperability that is being used right now it's nerdy stuff so for those nerds out there <laughs> it is we admit anyway, that this so that's is our very, little very overview nerdy. on zk i think right i don't i don't think we have much more to no i think that's, that's we're, cool. we're at risk of going super nerd deep here so. well i i want to go nerd deep but uh but uh, i'm holding back so that's Good. okay Good I can bore and people you sometimes. can find many information really on the internet there is yeah. even information on wikipedia but that's that's definitely a very nerdy topic if you want more of course let us know we'll be happy to dig more into it but i think for now um it is fine for an introduction to the concept yeah. so maybe we can yeah. move to um some unique thing that uh dv sidechain will be able to offer sure. oh, besides zk proofs yeah that would be <laughs> that's <laughs> right that's right yeah but then uh, so yeah, I, that I connection would we, now we talk about uh maybe private side chains like we talk private about side chains uh, we talked about other things that side chains can do what, what about just like providing privacy that's right hmm. and so i think the concept is kind of um unclear right because private can mean uh the data is not public it can mean anonymous it can mean so there are different models of that right so and maybe we levels, can start yeah. with with that sorry what were you saying no i said in different levels of privacy so like um like we 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 think we like people try to think of bitcoin as private and it's not really right so it's it's the transactions are completely public the part that kind of resembles privacy is the pseudonymous uh, addresses that are not attached to your identity. It's very difficult to keep your address uh, distinct from your identity, as, you know, especially um, since you are uh, interacting with the world and there are people gobbling up um, data on the internet. So every time you put in an address, every time you send to your address from Coinbase, yeah. um, all of that stuff is known. And the presumption is when you send from Coinbase to your own wallet, that that's your wallet. And so that there's a link made between you and, and your, your, your known account on Coinbase. So there's, there's no anonymity. No, well, there's perceived anonymity there, but it's not really, it, it doesn't hold very long. Yeah. Um, and, and there's certainly no privacy. That's certainly, that's certainly public, right? It's, yeah, it's on the yeah. ledger available to everybody. So oh, I think then, I think that's the difference, yeah. right? When we have an address on a street, it may be our private residence. We may hide it away. We may put it under a rock, but somebody knows that rock is there. If I have a transaction on the blockchain, people can see that that transaction is there, but they don't know me until I share with Neeks that I just moved some crypto and he or I, I could say i paid Neegs some crypto and he pairs that same address this is especially susceptible to be uh, abused for public information on account space blockchains because you usually have just a single address as opposed to many but the minute i pay Neegs Neegs can then share that address with rob and say that's voices address so that's that would be pseudonymous. It is private. It's private until I share it. But then it depends upon that person that I shared with, what information they can derive from that, and then who they share it with. So your example is perfect. Coinbase, I withdraw from Coinbase my Litecoin. It goes to my Litecoin wallet, my Litecoin address. Now, I've done that a couple of times. They now know that the voice has this other address it's some other location if i send litecoin from that account to coinbase they've now confirmed that those two things are paired together there is no anonymity ever on on layer ones that are bitcoin based blockchains unless they're anonymous blockchains like monero um but it's completely totally highlighted now because i did a transaction from and to that same account that i have on coinbase and they now know 
who I am. Yeah, so to summarize, I think that it's important to realize that there are several degree of um, privacy or privacy enhancing features. And the thing is that when you start one chain or when you look at uh, the, the industry and what chains uh, are currently offering, it's not really, you don't have an a la carte privacy, right? It's It has a set of features and it, you can't really go around that. And if you get to blockchain that don't have a public ledger, um, that have the privacy that is too far and voice you were mentioning some business case, uh, yeah. those blockchains are they're banned because obviously they have plagued with accusations of criminal activities. Exactly. And, and it is, it is a major issue to take one example. Um, of course, Monero is the most obvious, but if you take Litecoin and then you take, um, it's Mimble Wimble, um, um, mechanism or feature protocol. Um, basically any address that is Mimble Wimble is not accepted on any exchange, right? You can use your normal Litecoin address, but whenever it goes to Mimble Wimble, that's over. We'll never go back to exchanges. And so it is important to understand that. And, and basically the, the sidechain model and the direct connection, the direct trustless connection enable to have a completely custom privacy, right? You can really have mm -hmm. um, the, the rule set that you need while still preserving uh, some reporting ability, some, because um, look, like if you have um, an opaque blockchain, then obviously the authorities will not be happy about it, right? They will want to be able to review what you did and kind of tax you on everything. And so being able to have a blockchain that has reporting abilities by some, um, some companies, like some companies, as an example, would start like a smart contract for their operation on that side chain. And then they would basically have access to all this data while public wouldn't have access to all that data. Right. Mm -hmm, and then mm -hmm. they could also implement some, you know, access levels because basically you don't you probably don't want all your company to have access to all the data immediately. So all of that can be uh, really refined properly in a sidechain model. You couldn't be able to impose all that on everybody on one big blockchain, but then on a sidechain, it's really the best business case that you have or the best support or infrastructure support that you have for a business case um, to be able to support compliance reporting and all those key things that business needs. Yeah, so I mean that's two two levels. So when we're talking about private side chains for regarding privacy, and another one where you're talking about a private side chain for business, because I don't need to know, I don't need my competitor to see my information. I don't need my competitor to see my contracts. I don't need my competitor to see my payments. And just like I, I don't necessarily need to see have my vendors see all the payments going back and forth, or for that matter, even employees, uh, you know, to see that information, although some may debate against that. Um, I think that there are points that are just private, responsible decisions you can make. That's far different than hardcore anonymity, where I think that much of what goes on on these anonymity blockchains, that includes Monero, that includes Zcash, and, and all these other ones that kind of fall under that, I would say that most of the people doing that are just very, you know, free thinking, you could call them in some cases, just crypto patriots, if you want to call them that. They're just moving coins back and forth. They're just doing their thing. However, it does bring the light of anti-money laundering laws, and it brings those people who, who want to be able to see, and that's why, unfortunately, you see them get delisted from exchanges like Binance and some of the other ones, including Kraken and, and some of them that did list coins, or maybe they relisted coins, but they were had pressure from at least government entities, right? They discourage banks from doing business with exchanges 
and that's how they start applying the pressure. Yeah. If, uh, if a government entity goes after a specific exchange because that specific exchange is allowing people to buy or trade a specific anonymity coin, those monies going back into fiat or from fiat can be choked because of some <clears throat> external... It's another reason why we need to get rid of fiat. How about that? Let's 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 just kill the whole fiat system and let's get everybody accepting crypto, and then we don't have to worry about any of these things. Uh, it's funny because I, I got into I, I I got into crypto because I didn't want to empower governments, and yeah. now and so I'm gonna I'm gonna get back to privacy in a second. Um, so I get into crypto. I don't want to empower governments. Uh, I moved to Puerto Rico because I don't want my the you know the the products of my labor to empower a big government, yeah. um, and so uh, then I you know crypto goes along and we create a system that is filled with holes um, in, in terms of interoperability to the point where we're now empowering governments like North Korea, which I'm not a fan of. I, you know, I, if I was empower if it was empowering the people of North Korea, I wouldn't feel as bad, but. You know, we're literally funding that government with with expo with, with our ability, uh, with our failure to um, uh, be robust against exploitation and hacks and so forth and just scams and the custody and all that empowers folks like that. We also empower the American government by creating custodial systems where they can just take it um, and then they sell it, or, <laughs> right? Or, and, you know, and so I didn't me. get into crypto for that. Um, yeah. And here we are still empowering governments with, with millions and millions of dollars worth of, of crypto. Um, and so that's why I'm liking the Divi, the Divi sidechain methodology there. It makes a rock solid bond between, you know, the main chain and all the utility want to do. There's no hackable bridge. Um, that's important. Yeah. Now, privacy kind of... Uh, like like we're talking about, let's say full privacy, where you just can't figure, you, you can't know who, anonymity. Who did what, then right? let's let's yeah, move to that yeah, point. Let's call it's it anonymity. anonymity. Sorry, mm -hmm. um, it, I have to say it bothers me. Um, it bothers me because I you know I'm now not not I may be in, in fact being uh, um, empowering governments. We'll never know, um, and then we're definitely empowering bad guys. Um, like that that's not even a question. Mo like. I think it's about half of all ransomware is, is now done on Monero because they smartened up realizing Bitcoin was bad uh, for doing that stuff. So like it bothers me on my moral side that that this empowers that. However, um, almost everything that I think people should have, including free speech and guns, also empowers bad guys. So uh, like it, it's in terms of these kind of networks that allow purely anonymous kind of transactions it's just a thing like i have to remind myself that uh that the thing is good it's a tool right and people use tools for bad things and where i get to is like if it weren't better easier or whatever to do the bad thing um then they you know people would be less prone to do the bad thing so so like in terms of drugs or anything like that like why are those illegal you know, it's that's what's encouraging the bad, the bad thing, not not crypto, right? You know, if they're if they're not selling drugs, people do or, bad you know, things or, because they want to do bad things, is what you're saying, and 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 whatever no, 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 I'm and, saying, and whatever do tools, because it's it's easier to do it that way than it is to com than it is to comply, or even <laughs> or even because there's a demand for I things think that are illegal. We three have differing opinions on that, but but anyway, it's it's. Uh, I'm sure there are some people. I think it's a tiny minority <laughs> of people who do bad things just to do bad things. Yeah. Um, I think a lot of people are doing bad things because you know there's a demand it's an for easy drugs. Path. Or, yeah, it's or an whatever. easier path. That's yeah, that's it's an easier way. path. I agree with that. And so, I, so, I, so, I, but I think it's a side topic though compared to what we were. Uh, mentioning it, it it is actually interesting because what you're talking <coughs> about is actually those models where um basically it's completely opaque and obviously i think it's yeah i totally align with you on that it's like everything right yeah it can be used for good or bad but i think it is not a fight for now i think that now the fight and i think we talked about that during the news segment yeah i think the fight for now is sovereignty over your financial transaction and financial assets. And then we can look into if we can move forward toward a complete privacy or anonymity. But at least 
until we can get to that fight. Um, the sidechain model offers some kind of hybrid model, which allows you to kind of be private or I'll take the company example again, because for a company, it allows them to basically manage all their data with access levels without having it public by anyone and then still being able to do reporting and compliance because obviously um, if we talk about those anonymity coins, no legitimate business will ever use those coins. The risk no. is way too high for them right. to do that, to be associated with the yeah. reputation of it. And so basically it offers them something that's not possible right now, which is decentralizing their database, right? And it's not currently possible. And you can imagine that major companies, which have a lot of different offices could all run a node and then they would have all that and probably, you know, lower their costs and have this access everywhere for all their employees. So it definitely offers some kind of, um, specific, um, I would say, yeah, custom made a blockchain environment that is um, a lot more welcoming for businesses. Yes. And actually compatible, right? Because there's, there's, so businesses, they, they don't fight, like they generally don't fight the good fight, <laughs> you know, like, like making right. sure governments stay out of your stuff. They, they, they generally don't, um, and maybe to different degrees, but um, so they are going to comply and you know and they want to be competitive and they want so so that's why uh they want channels of privacy where it's open in some in some directions and closed in others and that's the kind of thing that you're looking for uh as a as a as a company you want it to be private for you know for this group of people which is vendors in fact, vendors and customers and not for this group of people which might be auditors and you know accountants and government um that's right so that, that's what that those those kind of different levels of of privacy are super important if we ever want uh true adoption and that's you know that's what divi sidechains will, will be able to uh uh provide and the last point that we didn't mention is for this infrastructure they don't need a coin and yes. so for yeah. a normal legitimate business having to manage a coin, put it on the market first of all it is a headache in terms of pr right but mm -hmm. then uh, you also have to manage all that. You have to make sure all that is working. You have to have a project behind it. And obviously a lot of most businesses couldn't care less about that. They want, they want to leverage the business, in, the blockchain infrastructure, if it gives them benefit, but if it just has, have, you know, add more work and something that they're not at all familiar with, of course, for them, it's a big barrier with the, the side chain, you don't need necessarily to put a coin in there. It can right. all, you know, be using DV, uh, DV fees for the operations. And then it doesn't need, it doesn't need anything more than that. Yeah. And they don't have to like, they don't have, their customers don't have to, cause it's, it's for the company, right? So it's the customers don't even see it anymore. It's, you know, the idea is that it's for the company infrastructure. Yeah. Okay. So they, they buy Divi, um, and then they get the, the, the features of the, of the, of the side chain, uh, but their customers never have to see it. Uh, you That's know, right. they don't want it to, so, but exactly. they can still do, you know, NFTs, they can still do all this stuff, uh, on a, on a Divi side chain, but their customers never have to see any of it. That's exactly right. <laughs> cool. So, all right. I think it was a little bit all over the place for the site, for the private side chain, yeah, <laughs> but I, I think we, it triggers we me a lot. It <laughs> what did you say? I get triggered by parts of that discussion. Uh, yeah, I get triggered I, too. I think because I, that's it's why important, I've been quiet right? For a second. Yeah. <laughs> but I, but I just think th sometimes because I I've had this um, anonymity um, conversation a few times in the last year or so, and I, I I just believe that maybe it will come in time. But you we can't have we can't have it now. Yeah, they're and, way and too close to it. Right. And you did the right thing by deconflating privacy and anonymity. Um, man, I have a hard time saying that word um, because <laughs> they're not the same thing and they meet they and, they're, yeah. and they're used for different things and they're not. And so it's important to not, not conflate them together. That's right. Yeah. And there are, there, it is a spectrum realistically, yeah. like it is, uh, it has some, some features, but then when it, when it is too much, then now it's it's considered anonymous and yeah. it's rejected. Mm -hmm.
<laughs> yeah. yeah exactly. Yeah. I think that's what it comes down to is if you're trying to purposefully, well, I, I would say the people that, that try to commit crime, they're always going to make it difficult for people because they will over legislate anything because it's easier to over legislate and see and say something like, see, I fixed it. <laughs> right. It, it, I, I, there was, I just spoke to a person who talked about government regulation and I won't go into it, but it just happened to be this group made food for somebody and they gave it away and it turned out the food made people sick. Right. So Oof. you have this issue where, where people are giving it away. And instead of really going to the source where and why people got sick, what ends up happening is in this, in this true story, it was a butcher who really did poor work, really um, didn't follow the processes there. And then what the government then does is say, well, you can't produce food. You can't give away food. You can't do any food unless you're, let's say, licensed in some way. So now everybody that's wanting to have a potluck, every organization that wants to have, you know, some sort of special thing where they're doing something kind for somebody need to be legislated because of one butcher. That's the same thing with criminal things that happen in blockchain. Yeah. It is a minority compared to the majority the majority problems that happen with uh, uh, that are criminal acts that happen in the world deal with fiat and they deal with the most well-known, most well-trusted, largest banks in the world that participate in this, this criminal act and all these things. And so it's easy for, let's say, somebody to look at crypto and say, ah, oh, that's a, a shining light right there. See, I fixed it but then they ruin it for everybody else. They limit, they destroy it, they overregulate they don't fix it. it. They move it. They don't fix anything, exactly. They don't <laughs> fix anything. Anyway, yeah, so right. I digressed again. Sorry. <laughs> cool, so we'll be happy to change that with the, with the side chain. And I, yeah. I, think we, I think we're good. Um, I think that was- I good, think uh... so. All right, guys. Well, thanks for the- good. All right, uh, another thanks good so much. Thanks, right. everyone. Okay, bye. Bye now.